All right, good evening. Let's get started. Uh, we're going to continue today talking about network models. And um, in particular, we'll consider two more models that allow us to generate networks. So last time we talked about random graph model or Erdős-Renyi model. Today, uh, we're going to spend most of the time talking about uh, what so-called preferential attachment model by Barabashi and Albert. Um, and then we'll also talk about small, small world model. So in fact, those three models, they are they're kind of covering the entire spectrum of, of models that are used in network modeling today. But of course, these are, if you notice, it's 1999, 1998. So these are like sort of grandparents of today's models, right? Parents and grandparents of today's models. And so um, by, but by understanding these models, you will understand um, how modeling is done today. Typically, today's models are some sort of versions or combinations of these three models. Now, we also talked previously about three sort of most distinct features, um, empirical uh, features of the network, um, which is a power law, heavy tail degree distribution. So it's a degree distribution of the network that's important. Um, then um, the fact that uh, networks have a small average distance or small graph diameter. And the third property is this graph, tra it's, it's transitivity, graph transitivity or large clustering coefficient or uh, sort of lots of triangles in the graph. And um, when talking about these models, we'll try to calculate those properties, those metrics, and see if they match what we see in the real world networks. Because I mean, ultimately, the the you know the reason for these networks, uh, for for this I'm sorry, the reason for this model is to be able to you know model the real world networks, right? Okay. So now. The, the motivation uh, for this Barabasha Albert or preferential attachment model is the following. Think about um, the networks that you see here on this slide, the citation network, say collaboration network, World Wide Web, I mean, social network. Um, what do this network have in common, which we did not include, say, in random graph model? So what is it about those networks that we actually, that, that they have, but we haven't used so far. So when you have citations or when you have social network, um, are, they, are they constant or do they change with time? They do change. Yeah, they grow, right? Now, sometimes, you know, some networks will shrink, but the, the, the important property we're gonna focus on today is the fact that networks do evolve with time. And in this particular model, we're gonna look into the growth of the network. And in fact, that property of, of the growing network, that would create the distribution, this power law distribution that we are after. So these networks are dynamic and dynamic not only in the sense of you know changing the, the structure, the connectivity, but the fact that um, they grow with time. So adding new nodes and adding new links or edges, right? You get new new people joining social networks and they connect to other people. Um, you got new papers written and then cite other papers, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll just without any further ado, we're gonna just jump into the model itself. Okay. So um, this is a model due 1999. So the idea is the following, and that's pretty much, I mean, this, this it's, it's covers the whole you know, model. Um, it's very simple. So the model starts with some number and zero nodes and some number of edges, all right? So there is some sort of seed configuration. Can the triangle can do whatever, right? Some seed. Then at every time step, we bring a new node with some fixed number of edges, M edges. And that node connects with those edges to the other nodes in the graph. 
right? So you have some graph, you have this basic fundamental original structure, then you bring a new node with say three edges, and then it connects to different nodes with its with these edges, right? So first is this growth, uh, adding new node with connections. And the second important part of the model is how it selects the nodes the new node connects to. And the idea is that it's going to connect preferably to the nodes with a higher node degrees. So the higher the node degree, the more chance that the new incoming node will connect to it. So the logic is like, you know, reach gets richer, or, you know, when you try to join social network, are you going to connect more likely to somebody who has no friends or who has you know, lots of friends? And so the idea is that there are more chances that you connect with somebody who has more friends than no friends, okay? And so that's expressed in this formula that says the probability of connecting to the node of degree K sub I, well, K I, right, is proportional to the, that node degree. Uh, the way it's written, it's normalized by the sum of the node degrees of all other nodes to make it a probability, right? So this is literally um, the key formula, right? The key formula um, for the model. Now, the way the model operates is again, on every time step we add uh, a node. And so after T time steps, they're gonna be T plus N zero nodes because there was N zero nodes at the beginning. And uh, on every time step, we add a node. So after T is that time steps, we get T plus N zero. We had M zero edges at the beginning. On every time step, a, a node that we brings in brings M edges with it. And there are T time steps. So that's how many edges the model will have. So as time goes by, we get more nodes, more edges. Um, let me show you here on, on a picture um, what it looks like. So let's say we have this triangle. And that's our initial scene. So there are three nodes. They're all connected. Okay. Time goes by. We get a new node that has two edges. It is not required, to, so it, it, it tries to connect to the nodes with a high probability connect to the nodes that have high degree. Now here, all the nodes have the same degree, so it just connects um, you know, randomly to them. But then what happens after it connects to it? The degree for those two nodes where, where it already connected increases. And because of that, the new node, when it comes in here, this is white new node, it actually has a big, better chance connecting to these two guys with a higher degree nodes. Now, next time step, there is a new node coming in. And again, um, the, it, it comes with two edges, right? So everywhere here, there are two edges. New node comes with two edges. So M is equal to two. And uh, it connects with a higher probability to the nodes of higher degree. So here it connects to this node, but then for example, it could have connected to this guy, but it actually connects to this white guy because again, it's not predetermined that it always connects to the highest node degree. It just has a higher probability connecting to the nodes with large degrees. And then it continues, the process continues. All right, so that does make sense. What's happening here? Okay. So that's preferential attachment model. And this is how a graph is growing, right? So one node is being edited one at a time with some number, fixed number of edges. Here it's two edges. And uh, the nodes are growing. Um, and, and on this picture, the size of the nodes is proportional to the node degree. And you can instantly notice that some nodes becomes larger, much larger than others in terms of um, their connectivity. All right, now let's look at some, yes. But um, in all uh, the examples, there may occur some dead nodes, uh, then 
as example, that station voucher was wrong and uh, the node stopped growing. And in this, uh, in this model, uh, this model doesn't handle this case. But I think it's a very usual case, like in a social network, somebody died and he never can accept friends. But if it is large node, it becomes, it continue growing. Okay, look, um, yes, uh, 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 it's, let me try to, to, to come back a little bit in our lectures, um, saying that these are models, right? They're not exactly reproducing the real, you know, real life scenarios. We're trying to understand some basic fundamental mechanics of how things work. Now, after you understand this, you can, you know, modify this model and add, if you want, like random death of a node that will stop accepting new new edges. So um, then it will be model named after your name, all right? But in this fund, in uh, this is again, this model is only considering growth. It does not consider shrinkage. It does not continue consider um, decrease in number of edges or any sort of death of nodes, all right? Okay, think about it again as a fundamental sort of basic model then you can extend it to whatever you want after you understand how it operates. All right. Now, um, here we're again going to do the same trick as we've done previously um, in terms of kind of switching to continuous representation, where we'll think about no degrees as a continuous variable. Um, you know, the reason for that is it's easier to you know, do integration than, than summation. And uh, uh, you can get pretty much the same results um, using, you know, doing it precisely, right, in the discrete space. Here, we're just taking a shortcut um, and going through, um, like replacing uh, discrete variables with the continuous variables. Um, you can actually think about this as there, for example, you know, expected value of, over multiple realizations um of, of the network so the idea is the following let's try to see how the the how the node degree evolves with time as, as this process continues so here is let's say at some moment of time this is a degree of a node i what we want to know is what do we expect what degree we expect this node to have at the next moment of time right after sort of another time step and uh, within this approach, this degree might change due to the new incoming nodes, right? So during time delta t, we get a new incoming node, and that node brings m edges. And the probability that this node connects to the node i is given by p uh, ki, right? This is, this is a probability that the node will connect to the node I. Now, this means you can get several parallel edges. That's okay for right now. Okay, so if that's the case, if that's our sort of assumption, how, how the, the, the degree of a node I, of the I node grow, then uh, we can, of course, rewrite this formula as just a derivative dKi dk dt, right? by just taking this, um, you know, putting onto the left side. And that's equal to M uh, probability P chi, K of I. Now, as we defined on the previous slide, in uh, this model, in, in a barbasha albert model, preferential attachment, the probability of a new node connecting to the node I is proportional to the degree of that node. So that's what we plug in here. And a reminder, um, the sum of all node degrees in the undirected network is equal uh, two times twice the number of nodes, but twice the number of edges. And here, the number of edges is um, m times t, because m edges being added uh, for every time step, and there are t time steps, all right? So uh, what happens is M is nicely canceling and we got simple differential equations, dKi dt over dt is equal to Ki divided by 2t. Now we can solve it 
with initial conditions that at the moment ti when the node is just added its degree is m right because when we add a node a new node it comes with m edges right m stops so the node degree so nodes appear at different moments of time but when they appear they always have degree m all right so that's the differential equation we quickly solve it by separation of variables right you know take this integral and then you get an answer. We get this formula that tells us with this process, with this mechanism, the degree of a node is growing with time and it grows as a square root of time. Right? Any questions here? All right, so here's a picture. Now, what's important to notice is this peculiarity. So these are the node degree of, of, of a node in the graph, depending on when the node joined. Let's say we take this node and this node joined at the time 10, right? At the 10 times 10. So it was, it, this was a, 10 nodes in the graph. Now, as time goes by, because new nodes join, because new nodes joining, they bring more edges with them. And those edges being distributed among the nodes that already exist in the network. And the node number 10, yeah, this one, getting um, new edges. And so getting new connections to the new nodes, as, and, and as, as time goes by, it's degree growing, okay? Then there is another node, node number 20, that joined um, the graph at the, on the 20th time, time step. Again, as time progresses, more nodes joining the graph, and giving some connection to this node and this node's degree growing and so on and so forth. All right? So then this guy, and then, you know, the guy which will grow, which will uh, join at, at 60, it will also initially will have, um, you know, three, uh, three edges because they all start with three and then it will grow with time. So why is this important? Well, there are a couple observations that I want to make. Number one, that whatever time slice you take, you know, whenever you look at the, at the, at the, at the network, there is always first camera advantage. There is always in this model, the degree of the node that started earlier, there will always, because this is a node degree, right? The degree of the node that started earlier will be always remain higher than the degree of the nodes that comes later. So it's those people with money early on will always have advantage of those who come later into the system. Those nodes that come earlier will always have higher node degree, more friends, more connections than those that come later, no matter what you do, right? That's how it happens. Now, this is uh, the value of the node of the node degree. I can take a derivative to look at the growth rate, so how fast it changes. And you notice a couple of things. First of all, um, the the growth rate of the node ki depends on two factors, right? It depends on time, and it slows down uh, because it's clear that the more nodes you get into the graph, right? The less, the less chance, the more the competition becomes for the new incoming edges, and the less chance this node will grow when a new node comes in, because this new node will have many more nodes to connect to, right? And so there's less chance it will connect to this node. So it slows down, the growth slows down with time. But what's also important, there is this factor, the time when the node joined. And notice it's invers inversely proportional. So the smaller this time, the earlier the node joined, right, the faster is the rate of its growth. 
So again, early money makes more money than later money. So you know you you do want to be first. Uh, it's first mover advantage, you know, kind of kind of story. And that's something to remember. Now, that's what happens in this model. So preferential attachment model always makes uh, the, the earliest node largest in the system. Now, let's, let's look at this. Um, here I built um, a, you know, a, a graph, a preferential attachment graph, when I selected M equal to one. So to make it simple, it's every node that comes in only brings one edge, all right? So what to observe here? Um, the numbers are the orders at which nodes arrived, right? So that's the time of arrival. So we expect that the nodes with low degree, I'm sorry, with low numbers, early arrivals will have the highest degree in the graph. Now, it's important to remember that this is still a random process. So the correct way to say it, those that are early arrival will have a higher probability to have higher degrees, right? You might, you might see nodes with sort of who are late arrival, but due to like sort of random fluctuation, uh, get pretty high degrees. But in general, that's what we expect. And look, yeah, here is node number here is node number one, pretty high degree. Node number two, pretty high degree. Um, node number three is not so, but you know it could have been, um, et cetera, et cetera. And in general, you will see higher later arrivals. They mostly low degrees, right? Um, you'll be able to generate those type of pictures. Okay. Now. Um, we're trying to say that this model, in some sense, allows us to understand um, the power law distribution, right? And in order to do this, uh, I mean, scale-free networks, in order to, to believe this, we need to calculate um, the probability distribution function. We need to calculate within this system, within this model, what would be the, after you know, it runs for a while, what would be the degree distribution, right? Which is... Uh, sort of what the probability of, of the node having certain degree. All right, so let's look at it. Um, we so far calculated uh, that the node degree changes with time the following way, right? So it is um, the, the degree at time t, right, as a function of time. That's our square root. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to find distribution function or probability that the node degree on the randomly selected node is equal to some value. So remember, we're going to be talking here about, uh, we, we're thinking about k as being continuous. So what I want to do is I want to calculate cumulative function and then differentiate it. That's just sort of a trick to do this. Now, what's cumulative function? Well, cumulative function is a probability that th that's what cumulative function is. It's a probability that a randomly selected node have a degree less than given degree, right? So randomly selected node K prime has a degree less than K at some moment of time. Now, in other words, we want to estimate the fraction of nodes at that moment that are less than k. Because then, since I'm randomly selecting nodes, that fraction will tell me the probability um, of selecting nodes below that value, right? OK, so how do we do that? Well, um, since we know time evolution of a node degree is given by that formula, you know we can rewrite it uh, in the following way. So we can calculate. Uh, you know, we can we can see this is k of t, right? We can just say, okay, um, for node degree i at time t, I want it to be to have a node degree less than k. Remember, node degree going with time, 
And so I want it to be less than k. So that would be true for nodes that joined after this moment of time. Let me get back for a second to this to this picture, um, because what I'm trying to say is this. If I fix certain moment of time, let's say here. Leonid, could you yeah. please let people in? From the uh, everybody, everybody is in. I don't see any requests. Um, OK. Um, all right, so if I pick some moment of time, let's say 60, six, six, 60 seconds or the, the timestamp 60, then if I want to have, for example, nodes that has degree below six, this should be, for example, these guys right the green one by the time 60 will grow above six degrees and it's only these guys who joined later will have have not grown uh above six by that time so that's what i'm trying to understand i'm trying to understand which nodes i still will be the young nodes in the graph and so they will not have a lot of connections so such that the degree will fit um, to what I have required. Let me go back. Okay. So it is these nodes that joined after that moment of time that will still be young enough and not have degrees above K. Right. So again, if this is a timeline and nodes joining every time step, right? Nodes joining, 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 joining. Um, this is um, a T, right? So what I need to have, what I need to figure out is that these are, for example, the nodes that are still young enough and this is a constraint and these are nodes that at time t have the node degree less than k so these are the nodes the nodes that joined after this moment of time because we know how they grow how they evolve so the nodes that will join after this moment of time by the time t will have degree less than k all right, if that's the case, then I can easily calculate probability that randomly picked a node will have degree less than k. Because what I need to do is I just need to calculate the total number of nodes that joined through this time interval, which is uh, n0 plus t, n0, that how many nodes we had, and t is number of time steps is, you know, how many nodes joined. And um, what I need to do is I need to find this number, right? This will be the fraction of the, this young nodes with uh, low degrees. To do that, I need to take this number and subtract this distance. But this distance is exactly this. And so that's what's happening here. And when you do it um, and simplify it easily, like you can, we can neglect this one as time increases, and then you get this formula. So this is cumulative distribution function. So notice, first of all, it does not depend on time. So the distribution function remains the same through time. And then um, notice it depends on, on, of course, k, and it depends on m, which makes sense. And then if I take this and differentiate, I'll get a distribution function. So the derivative is equal to m squared divided by k cubed. m is a number of, of edges that every new node brings in, and it's a constant. And that's something parameter of the model. But what's interesting here is this, in this k cubed. So it literally says that probability of finding node degree k is 
proportional to one over K cubed, which is a power law with gamma, if you remember gamma parameter, gamma is equal to three. So this model, this very simple model, instantly derives distribution function um, that we observe in the real world networks. And that was uh, sort of one of the major confirmation why this uh, you know, model became so popular. Again, we have seen this slide many times before, but I mean, this graph many times before, just want to show it again, um, that if we take a um, random graph, Erdos-Renyi graph, um, the probability distribution function of probability finding some nodes is given by this uh, you know, Poisson distribution, which is here, right, with some particular scale. And if we take barabashi albert model, the one we just derived, the probability is given by this distribution to m squared divided by k cubed, which is this line, right? And if you notice, yes, uh, uh, here is what we have here. Uh, so it, it's above the blue line, so it's fat tail distribution, and it doesn't have any any peak in it. Um, it's it's scale free. Um, and if I look into this distribution, into the distributions on the log log scale, well, as expected, of course, um, Barabasha Albert is a straight line, and, and Gaussian, oh, I'm sorry, and, and uh, Poisson is Poisson, right? It, it does this. So that's a model. Literally, that's sort of that's a model that was proposed by Barabash and Albert in 1999 and became like literally probably the most popular model for um, the, the networks, right? Now, if I try to generate using random graph and using Barabash and Albert, I get those two pictures. Uh, which one is which? I think the right is a Barabashi algorithm. Yeah. So the right is a Barabashi, left is random. So why is right is a Barabashi? Well, it looks like there is a very really, uh, large node degrees somewhere. Yeah. So the, 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 the way to detect it is that you got very uneven distribution of node degrees, right? You have very large nodes, you have very small nodes on the right hand side. Um, they're more even on the left hand side. And so that's sort of the signature of, of Barabasha Albert or preferential attachment or scale free graph, right? The sort of uneven size of the node degrees. Uh, this is preferential attachment model run with different number of uh, edges. When you bring in a new node, it comes either with one edge, right? And then you get a tree like on the left-hand side um, or with two edges or with three edges, of course, then becomes more and more densely connected right here i did not scale the nodes according to the node degree so you can see the the structure now um it's interesting to understand like notice there are two factors that we brought in to make this happen right so one factor is that the model is actually evolving with, with time right so it's 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 a it's growing model dynamic there's a growth and the second is preferential attachment. So the fact that the new node um, is selecting to where to attach, right? And it has high probability to attach to the nodes with a higher degree, with already high degree. So, so money goes to money, right? Um, out of those two things, you know, what is more important? Well, um, here's an experiment. We can actually keep this growth step right so have a sort of increased number of nodes adding new nodes in every time step but instead of having preferential attachment we can make for example at, we can make new nodes attach uniformly at random which is okay a new node comes in and instead of selecting with a higher probability a node with a higher degree to connect to it actually just randomly picks up a node and connects it Right? And if there are M links, well, it picks up randomly M nodes and connects to them. So then the probability connecting to the node of degree K sub I does not depend on the node degree and it is given by this formula. You can actually take this formula, plug it back and, and just sort of follow through the um, derivation we just did 
And uh, you will see that in this case, the node degree will grow much slower, right? It's going to be logarithmic. And then if we again, if you keep keep working through formulas, you will get degree distribution function that is exponential. So that tells you that preferential attachment, this attachment to the higher degree nodes is actually critical for the model to have a power law distribution. So without it, just with the growth, it is um, not, ex it, it's not showing it, it's not demonstrating it, um, the, the degree distribution is gonna be exponential. Now, with this model, um, though, you know, formula is quite simple, it's actually not very easy to derive other properties. We're not going to derive them. We're just going to, you know, look at the, at the, at the textbooks that did it, right, at the papers. And uh, you can show that within this model, uh, so it gives us power law distribution. Um, it actually, for the path length, it gives us logarithm which means it gives a small world right so that is close to you know the real world so this is close to the real world this is close to the real world now clustering coefficient is actually pretty small so it does not create a lot of triangles right so it creates correct di distribution it creates correct um uh average path length but it does not provide the right clustering coefficient, okay? All right, of course, um, you know, you can expand and extend this model in multiple ways, right? Um, as, you know, some of you mentioned at the beginning, yeah, you can introduce sort of the death of the node, you can introduce, uh, you can say, okay, until some degree, um, this is a behavior, and then above that degree, you know, maybe it's exponential. So you can actually bring in, you know, various types of models. Um, you can think of this nonlinear preferential attachment models that would be, okay, probability of connecting is proportional to the node degree to some power. And uh, if alpha is equal to zero, um, that will be just sort of our random connectivity as we saw in the going to be exponential distribution. If alpha between zero and one is going to be sublinear, if alpha is equal to one, that's exactly what we just discussed at Parabash Albert model, hubs, uh, you know, scale free graph. And if alpha is greater than one, it's actually become even more sort of super hubs and, and it becomes hubs and scope system and spoke system, which means very strong, very large hubs um, and, and some nodes connected. So it's even stronger preferential property. Um, this are some pictures uh, shows you that you know as 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 this alpha increases, of course, um, the, the the sort of the, the 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 size of the maximum hub increases. Now, um, it's it's worth mentioning that in order for those models to work the way it is that were proposed, um, they're global models in the sense that look probability to connect to some node is proportional to that node degree, which means uh, the system, right, that, that sort of provides these connections, they should know all the node degrees in the graph. Because otherwise you cannot calculate probability to, co to connect to some node, right? And even if you try to simulate this, you need to know all the node degrees in the graph, which means you need to have access to all the nodes. So it's a global, property now can we actually simulate this with some sort of local property right sort of if you don't know the entire graph is there a possibility to get this um scale free you know power law type of distribution with some sort of mechanism some different mechanism and that is yes there are several ways of doing it one of them is called uh link selection model and the idea is the following um, so remember, you know, in the, in the, in the Barabashi Albert model, we had two steps. Step number one, you, you know, we bring a new node, 
And step number two, this node is connected to existing nodes with a probability proportional to the, to the existing node degrees. But what I'm saying now is let's try to change these mechanisms such that we don't need to know node degrees. Um, one of the suggestions is what's called local growth. So we bring in a new node, and then we do the following. Instead of selecting node at random, we select link at random and connect to a, uh, you know, one of the two nodes at its end. So instead of selecting sort of node and connecting to the node, right, we actually select link and connects to the node um, at the end of this link. Why would you want to do this? Well, it actually create probability connecting to a node with degree k equal to this. Why is it so? Well, if p of k is a probability distribution function in the graph, then for the node of degree k, there are k ways to get to it. And so probability to connect to this node when you randomly select the link will be k times pk. So it's going to be linear in k. And so that's will give us pro that will give us um, uh, scale free um, model, right? Will give us that regime as we saw before. So that's one of the models. Now there is actually another model that is uh, also gives us the same result, which is a bit more uh, sort of realistic in some sense. Um, it 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 show it kind of repeats. Um, in some sense, it simulates, I would say, human behavior. So what is the idea is the following. Um, you know, back in the days, for example, when pe people were building their web pages, um, one of the ways to sort of quickly populate that web page with some links is to, um, you know, not only add links yourself to, to this page, but also, for example, if I, you know, you find some web page that you think are, are, are that have good links, and you just copy those links to you. Or, you know, speaking of social networks, uh, yes, what you do is, you know, you sometimes um, making friends with somebody, but then you can actually make friends with his friends, right? Sort of going uh, sort of one step further, and um, that's a model. So uh, you bring a new node, and this new node with uh, some probability p connects to a random node, right? Let's say you know pick up random node, and the same way as as with Barabashi Albert, it just connects to random node, but with some fixed probability. And the probability one minus p, which was sort of left over times. It actually randomly chooses an outgoing link from you and connects to it. So instead of connecting to this guy, it actually connects to the node right here, right? This guy is connected to. So instead of connecting to the node itself, it connects to the node it connects it to. Um, then you can easily show that the probability connect to a node with degree k in this case again is um, you know you have two options right you either connect directly to some node and uh, um, if there was n nodes and the probability to connect to a node with degree k is uh, here is p over n but also there is a since you selecting the next node you can show that the probability will be k divided by 2m, where uh, m is the number of edges. So again, we manage by this construction to have the probability to connect to a node with degree k be linear with respect to k. And if that the case, um, then as we saw here, right, we get the scale-free um power law graph right because that's what we have here so these are like two models that you know you can use without knowing the degree distribution to build this type of a network now 
to be fair, uh, Barabashi and Albert were not the first who actually thought about this, you know, preferential attachment. They call it preferential attachment because, uh, it, you know, they, they, they did it on a graph. But um, in fact, there are a lot of other sort of processes or papers or names for this phenomenon, right? Um, the original, one of the original is called Polyorn model, um, the yield process, um, then the distribution of wealth by Herbert Simon, and that's just the thing which we used to call like money goes to money. Then there is the zip flaw, or zip flaw, right? Um, that also used for uh, you know distribution of frequency of the words, um, and 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 so then there is a citation networks um, that Derek Lasoya Price uh, showed in 1976. So you know this discovery um, has a lot of sort of uh predict discoveries right and and i would say uh barabash and albert they actually just applied this model or reformulated it for the network but the model the idea that um you know money goes to money or or which gets richer or or you know sort of some words are extremely frequently used and more frequent than others um that they, they have been around for quite a while now what we talked about all those methods they're actually sort of random models in the sense that um, um you know it, it uses a sort of random randomized steps in the process now there is an alternative for the construction of this type of models which are more optimization models with the idea that look um this sort of this, this graph this power law occurred not by chance not because of this random mechanism but because of some sort of optimization. Now, thinking about, um, I don't know, social networks, right? You might think about, you know, people connecting it, trying to optimize certain, you know, certain, certain criteria, right? Certain um, award function uh, by, you know, selecting people you want to connect to. Um, in, in, in a physical world, you know, there might be some sort of, you know, natural constraints and natural optimization things that the nature wants to optimize that's also possible we're not going to go into those models the models we looked at um I'm, i just literally based on this random properties but sort of slightly different preferences um within the random model now that's the barabash albert model another model i want to look at is um, called a small world model um, and uh, it's actually much simpler, much, much simpler. Um, notice that Barabashi Albert model gave us, gives us um, the correct degree distribution and the small world property, but it couldn't give us a triangulation, right? It didn't give us this fact that there are a lot of triangles. And in the real world and social network, there are a lot of triangles. So this is a, an attempt to build such a network but do it like literally by construction. So take a look at this graph. Um, and by the way, this is done by physicists. So that's why you see this strange graph as, as a sort of circle. Um, you know, physicists love this uh, because it doesn't have sort of edges like boundary conditions, right? You can, you can actually think about this stripe and then it's connected. Um, so it's creating such a donut. So if you look at this graph, you realize that um, two things here, right? The clustering coefficient here is actually very high. It's one half, right? So it is half, you know, there, you see a lot of triangles and you can calculate that it is one half for every node. It's connected to the half of the all the nodes it could possibly be connected to, right? I mean, the, the connection between the, the nodes in the neighborhood is half of all the connections. But the graph diameter is actually very large, right? Here it takes, you know, pick up a node, um, and uh, it takes, you know, pick up a node and on average, well, you know, it takes a while to get to sort of other node. Now, by looking at this graph and let's say, you know, you actually want to, you know, you're allowed to build your own model, you're allowed, you're allowed to um, you know, make changes in, in the way we build graphs. Um, if there is any way, to preserve this clustering coefficient, which means to preserve the triangles, to keep the clustering coefficient high, but at the same time, reduce the graph diameter.
think about it. You can either add new new connections or you may kind of disconnect some and use uh, edges. But what would you do to make it kind of a small world graph? So what was proposed, uh, you know, very simple solution. Pick up, you know, any node, take up, take an edge that exists here, disconnect it, and randomly connect it to somewhere else. Yeah. Take another node, disconnect this edge, for example, randomly connect it. And then yeah, here, and maybe I am here, right? So what I have done, is I have broken one, two, three, four edges out of a lot of edges and reconnected them. But look what happened. All of a sudden, from here, or, or let's say from here to the opposite side, it might be not eight steps because I don't need to go around anymore, right? But it only one, two, three steps. So I literally, by doing this, I literally sort of shortcut it long distance, all right? And that's the idea. It's very, very simple. Um, so it was proposed by Watson Strogatz in 1998. It's single model. So it's interpolation between the regular lattice and some random graph. So you start with a regular lattice, as we saw, with N nodes, K ages, and then randomly connect with other nodes with some probability. And when you are, you know, when you don't have this sort of switching with all long range connections, regular lattice, when you have only them, you get a random graph, right? So you're kind of going in this model, depending on the parameter, you go from um, regular lattice to random graph. Now it's easier to see than just read this. Um, that's the that's um, their paper. It actually was published in Nature. Um, on the left hand side, we have a very regular graph. On the right hand side, we have random connected graph, and in between, we get this long range connections. Right? We disconnected some local nodes and connected them remote uh, on, on a large distance, and. Uh, so what happening is we increase randomness. It's clear by adding this long range connections that we are shortening the, the world, right? We're making the diameter smaller, but we're also destroying this local connections, local triangles. And the question is, is it possible for this system to exist in this in-between state? So still having enough triangles to have high clustering coefficient, but also get small, like enough long range connections to have small diameter, right? To become a small world graph. And they showed, I'll bet they showed it numerically that it is possible. So um, you can see it here. I think it's, it, you know, it's what they did is they said, okay, let's calculate the ratio of clustering coefficient um, at, at, with a parameter P and p again goes from zero to one, right? p equal to zero. This is, um, it's, it's a regular that it's p equal to one um, is a uh, uh, random graph, right? And so, you know, trying to find the, 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 the ratio of um, clustering coefficient at, at, at some parameter p, right? Um, and at over um, the value at zero, right? When you have a lattice, and this is p equal to one. So this is literally a random graph, so random. And this is uh, regular. And uh, yeah, this, this ratio, of course, you know, changes, drops. At random, triangulation is very low. At regular, it's triangulation is very high. And the same thing with um, average path length. And what was interesting that there is a set of parameters, or maybe here, or maybe you know, you can you, we can look at them sort of here. There is a set of there is a range of p where you still have pretty high 
uh, where you still have, I'm sorry, pretty, pretty low um, path length, but you have high clustering coefficient. So what they said is, yes, we can find a regime in this system by balancing this, that balances, um, that, that, that creates still short enough distance and creates, um, keeps enough triangles, right? Um, now, unfortunately, within this model, if you look at the probability distribution, it's not power law, it's again more of kind of like the one that random graph has, which is um, a, 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 a Poisson distribution or binomial distribution. Um, so this model does not gives us power law, but it gives us small world and gives us a high clustering coefficient. Um, here is an example. Um, on the left hand side, this is a regular graph, regular lattice. And, you know, I can just I actually calculated this. So average path length 358 and the clustering is 0.49. So clustering is pretty large. But for this graph, it's small graph. Uh, average path length is, is pretty large. Um, so what we can do is by rewiring it a little bit, we can actually uh, reduce average path lengths. And, and and still keep um, high enough clustering coefficient, sort of number of triangles. So it's 20% rewiring. So 20% of edges, uh, we just, instead of being connected to the nearest neighbor, we're randomly connected to some other node in the graph. All right, to sum up, we looked at three models, right? Uh, we looked at um, the random graph model, um, ardash model last time. We looked today at the barabash albert model. We looked at the what strogatz it's the one, the last model. And here's empirical networks. This is what sort of we see in the world. That's like our social networks. Now, random graph uh, gives us a probability distribution that is Poisson while empirical networks is power law, so that doesn't work. Um, Barbasha-Albert model actually gives us perfect power law, which is amazing, that works. Uh, what strogons, no good for distribution. Now, random graph in terms of, um, in terms of real world, in terms of clustering coefficient, this is bad because increasing number of nodes that drops to zero while triangulation is large in the real world. Here it's also drops to zero, so it's not good. But what's in Strogatz, it's good. And in terms of uh, size of the graphs, the small world properties, all of them um, actually works, right? It's log, log, and log. They're slightly different. So what's in Strogatz, these are two properties that satisfies empirical networks. Uh, Barabashi Albert, this property and this property satisfies the, the real world. In random network, it's only this one that satisfies the real world, right? So in some sense, of course, these two models are you know closest to the real world. And that's why, of course, you know, again, whereby um, the random graph model is going back 1950, these two models were created um, you know, in the year 2000 after the discovery of, of this network science. And they actually were created trying to explain the power law that we see in empirical networks, the large clustering and the small diameter. So we created to do this. Now, by themselves, the simple models do not explain all of those properties um, simultaneously. If you notice, it explains two out of three. But of course, based on those models, people have created lots of models by combining those two and sometimes adding some you know, properties from the random graph um, to actually satisfy all three um, you know, properties of the, of the real world network. So that's pretty much, I think that is it for today. Yes, this is it. And I think it's very important, sort of the, the summary of the last two lectures that's I would like you to remember, right? For those three models, they're very different models. Um, they have different properties and would be good for you to remember uh, what properties matches the real world um, networks 
and what properties um, in the model um, they reproduce well and what not. Okay. Any questions? All right. So if there is no questions, then we're done for the day. Thank you.